I feel like as an artist, like there's different characters. And especially like when we talk about hip hop, it's like, okay, you're either a thug or you, you, you know, popping it open. And there's so much we can talk about and we're only talking about one thing. Like, you know, I just feel like it's, it's so much more to woman empowerment. And that's another thing, because I watch these interviews, I watch the female rappers talk about it, and it's always woman empowerment. And, you know, but it's like, woman empowerment looks like so many other things, and we're focusing on this, oh, you yeah. know? You know what we focusing on. <laughs> and we focusing on busting it open. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection of creativity and currency. And as you guys know, we like to bring interesting people who are from different walks of life in the creative industry who represent No Labels. Today we have Nilla All In. She is an influencer. She's an artist. And she got she got a lot of talents going on. <laughs> if, you, if you check her out on social media, over 1.3 million followers on TikTok, over 140,000 on Instagram. Am I, am I forgetting anything else? You hit it right on the nail. Okay. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so I appreciate you um, pulling up because I think you're going to be like just a great person to speak to in terms of the transition from a regular career into the creative industry in general, let alone being an artist. And, and obviously even just hacks in terms of how you've built your social media. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to just seeing what gems you can drop. But let's start here. You mentioned that you, so did you go to college for engineering? Because you said you were doing engineering. Yes, yeah, so I have, my, my background is in math and science, um, but I went to school for human developmental sciences, and then I added a specialization in equity and diversity. But I did an internship at an engineering company, and I did really well on the project, so they hired me the next year, like right out of college. And you hated it? Yeah. <laughs> Engineering was not for me. Like it was, it was a great job. It was a great job right out of college to stack, you know, and and do the things. But as far as just being there every day, the environment was so draining, and it's nothing but like you know older men. So a lot of people didn't know how to talk to me in the space. Um, so it was just, it was frustrating. I was miserable. I was miserable. And then, you know, it's kind of just like I'm, I'm in the workspace. I'm, I'm, I literally felt like Hannah Montana because it's like I'm going to work at this engineering job. And then I leave and I'm going viral on TikTok and I'm like in the studio and stuff like that. And it's like, I just, I wish this, I need this to be my life. Like, I don't want to just, I don't want to, you know, work my job. So were you already somebody on social media while you were in college or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in college, I started, um, it actually started when I was 17. When I was like 16, 17, I started posting a lot more on Instagram. My followers started to grow just because, I, you know, cute curly hair girl from LA. So everybody was, you know, following me. And then when I got to college, me and my best friend started a YouTube channel. So that's how we kind of, uh, that's how really I started getting into influencing through YouTube. And then from YouTube, um, you know, the next big thing was TikTok. So I was like, well, shoot, let me hop on TikTok. And it was never a thing for money or nothing like that. I just really like, like, I have a big personality. So I just like sharing, you know, myself with the world. I like being creative. I like putting together videos. Even with our YouTube videos, I edited all our videos. Like, it was, it was therapeutic for me. And I always, I needed that creative outlet, especially during college, um, because I needed something else to do but schoolwork you know, and, and other stuff. So YouTube was like my creative outlet. And then once we stopped making videos, that's when I kind of started doing my own thing, writing music, um, getting on TikTok. I just needed, so I just always had like this yearning for a creative outlet. Got you, got you. So yeah, it was, it wasn't like this intentional, hey, I'm working in engineering, I need to become an artist or something no. like that. Okay. No, it was kind of like, I'm, I'm working as an engineer. Honestly, if I was never on TikTok, I, wouldn't have seen the like what I can do and I probably would have just stuck it out at my job but the fact that I knew okay everybody is loving me over here I'm going viral it's fun and I'm building a fan base it's kind of like every day I went into that job it's like well why the fuck am I here like you know I'm popping outside here so why like why can't I just you know build that and monetize that you know as a way to 
get out of this. But yeah, if I didn't, if I didn't have that, no, nah, I wouldn't. I would still be there. So, what was the thing that happened that made you go like, I can make this work and, and leave this place? I would imagine leaving an engineering job, not even just the the job itself, but the the money. I'm pretty sure it was paying. I, I, I feel like that was a hard decision. So, what did you see that made you go, oh, I can I can get out of this space and I'll be cool? So the first time I thought about it was when I got this deal with Instagram. I got a deal with Instagram Reels on the influencing side of things. And that was another thing, because like the music and the influencing has kind of been hand in hand. There was a one part where like my content creation or I was known more for influencing than music, but now it's kind of like hand in hand where my music is getting, uh, I'm, I'm getting more known for that. But um, so Instagram had reached out to me to do a deal because I was, you know, going crazy on TikTok. So they were trying to bring more creators over to the Instagram platform to create reels. So they're reaching out to all these TikTokers and they reached out to me. And so it was, you know, it was a long term deal. And I was, you know, a nice little check. So I was like, well, shoot, if I could do some TikToks from my living room, you know, and this is more than I've made, you know, than past well, four months at the engineering company, you know? So I was just looking at how much money I was getting from brand deals. And I was like, oh shoot, yeah. At this point, I could probably make some shake. Got you, got you. So what was your strategy? Cause it sounds like at the beginning you were just creating for fun, right? It was an outlet. Mm -hmm. But did you ever start to say, okay, I want to increase my numbers and these are the formats and this is what's working. Like what is your approach to content that makes your stuff go viral? So even before that, like I had to, I, I had a list of kind of my inspirations or, you know, goals or milestones or whatever. And I'm looking at what other people are doing. And although the content was fire, I wasn't able to spit out content as much as every other, you know, creative because I'm working this job. So it got to the point where it's like, I got home and I would be so drained. I couldn't even create, I couldn't even write music. I couldn't do nothing just because I was so like depressed and just mentally out of it from this job. So I couldn't be creative and I was stuck. And you know, when you're stuck, when the numbers are stuck, when, you know, it's like you, I couldn't be myself. I just feel like I couldn't be myself. You know, the, um, the brand deals, they're looking at analytics and stuff. So you have to keep the content going, but I was just so tired. So I, it got to the point where it's like, I went into work one day and I'm talking to this other guy. He was one of my coworkers and he used to be a rapper. And so mind you, this dude, he was like 40. And so um, he found me on social media. It got to the point where people at my job were finding me on so social media and they were talking to me about it. And this one dude came up to me and he's like, you know, when I was younker, I was a rapper. And he sent me, you know, some of his stuff we talked about. It. I'm like, bro, you are lit ass fuck. Like, why are, like, what happened? And he's like, you know, life. And I just, I didn't make the decision and I'm, I'm stuck here. And he was like, and you don't want to look up and be 40. And now you're talking to, you know, a 21 year old intern about, you know, how you had plans on being a rapper. So that kind of changed my whole mentality. I started just doing research, like, you know, YouTube, I, man, just crazy. You know, when you try to contemplate a decision and you look up YouTube videos to try to guide your decision. So I was looking up all those videos, like, why should I quit my job? You know, that's <laughs> And I came across this one video and it was like, if you have a goal and if you, if there's something that you want to become, you have to start moving like that person before you even get there. So I had to build out Nilla All In. I'm like, okay, who is she? What does she do? You know? And it's like, where does she work? What does she do? You know what I'm saying? And it's like the Nilla All In that I had in my mind does not work there. So I, I had already, I knew, I, I mean, the way that I was raised, my parents already taught me about savings and, you know, budgeting and stuff like that. So while I was at the job, that was just second nature for me, you know, so I was already taking a percentage of my income, putting it in my savings. So I was comfortable too, because I'm like, okay, I'm sitting on some savings. So if I do, you know, need to leave or if I do have a backup plan, I, you know, if I want rap to be the quote unquote, you know, backup or whatever, then I can leave and I can, I can always do that. So um, it, it was definitely my savings, but it was also just mapping out the new version of who I want to be and moving like that version of myself. And it was really like I had to take myself out of my body and look at my page from like somebody coming across my account. And then that's when I'm like, OK, so if I was a fan of me or if I came across my content and I've never seen myself before, what would I want to see? You know, and. 
Honestly, like, it was at a point in my career where, because like I said, I started off with the influencing. I, you know, I got on TikTok. Really, the influencing came from just my, my comedy. A lot of people know me for, like, my comedy skits on TikTok. And that's how I first really got my, my fan base. And, you know, the comedy started going up. Everything started booming. But I couldn't, like, when I would post the music, the music really wouldn't get so many views. And so I'm like, everybody's talking about my personality and how funny I am and how this and this. But nobody is streaming the music so then that's when i had to look at the content and it's like okay well if they like the personality and they like my crazy facial expressions then i need to figure out a way to put the music in with the comedy skits you know in with the shit that's going viral so that's when i was like okay i'm gonna start doing my little skits around my music and then that's when that shit started to pop up so when when all my when the streams started to go up and the content starting to go up and the brand deals starting to go up that's when like it kind of I, you know, pump me up a little bit, and I'm like, okay, I could leave this job, you know. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> but it was, it was definitely, like, over the course of years. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, an immediate decision that I just hopped up and made. What would you say the difference is between creating comedy content that pops and music content that pops on TikTok? I would say, okay, so, like, the comedy for me like my comedy skits that was um, that was popping was more so acting. It's not even really comedy. It's more so acting, and they were finding entertainment in how good I act in my facial expressions and stuff like that. So as far as comedy, it can be like a let's say a sound, a sound on TikTok or whatever that I hear, and I reenact it. I reenact something that's already viral. It's kind of like the work is already done for you because all you're doing is reenacting another piece of content that somebody did. But I'm just, you know, this is just me reenacting it. And since the content was or the sound was already viral, then, you know, my content would nine times out of ten go viral because the sound is viral. But with making comedy skits around music, it takes more, a lot more originality and thought because I'm not working with a viral sound. I'm trying to make my music a viral sound. So it's kind of like, you know, let's say if I scroll on TikTok and I see um, it's a skit and the guy is like, you know, oh, when you show your homie a new rap song and let's say it's, you know, them in future and they rap in future, you know, I'll take that and I just apply it to myself. So, you know, I'll, I'll say, okay, this is funny. This is cool. It made, it made me laugh. It's entertaining. I'll hit up the homegirl. Let's, let's reenact this exact same skit, but except doing it with future's music, we finna do it with Nilla All In, you know, and we finna just promote the new song and then it would go viral just because people are engaged in the, in the entertainment of it all, you know? So yeah, you literally just take out one element and plug yourself in exactly. for content that's already working. Exactly. I like that. Because people overcomplicate it a lot of times. Do you feel like you need to think about all your, well, obviously not all of them, but do you get into a bag where you're like, I want to create some ideas from scratch? Oh, absolutely. I feel like, I think I'm one of the people who overthink it sometimes. Because nine times out of ten, it's my simple stuff that, like, now, now when it, when it, now since I already have eyes on me, um, when I kind of just put the music out there or when I grab the camera and talk to the camera, like, yo, I just dropped this hot song, you know, again, just using my personality to get it out there. It's more personable. So I feel like it goes more, more um, it does more numbers or it gets more out there when the content is person, personable, and that's kind of like my brand. But now when I do, like, it, it depends on what it is, but sometimes I'll do some skits, like original ideas, very original, um, that involves my music and stuff, and it won't perform as well. But, you know, again, it's kind of like, if it doesn't perform well and I know the content is good, then I just have to make some changes, you know, re-edit, turn, you know, do a different different hook, you know, different beginning, or try to make it smaller cause, or um, shorter. Because a lot of my, like, my videos be like a minute, like 30 seconds to a minute long. So if it doesn't do well, I'm like, okay, maybe I should, you know, condense this into 15 seconds, you know, type. So I kind of just look at, the, look at the data. You don't ever feel like, oh, these people don't want to hear music from me at all, or maybe this, <laughs> you better. Oh, no, they want to hear some music. <laughs> no, they want to hear my music. And if they don't, you gonna listen to this music. Okay. <laughs> You go hear this music. I'm going to keep pushing it. Yeah. Because sometimes I just feel like, too, I, okay, now the algorithm be playing with me. The algorithm be playing with me. Like, I'll, I'll be doing really, really, really good on views with the music. And then I'll drop something, you know, some time ago, by, I'll, some time ago by, I'll drop something. 
and then the views won't be viewing. In my head, I never think it's the music because I know the music is good. I think it'd be the algorithm. I think it'd be TikTok. I think it'd be TikTok. <laughs> Because I feel like they'd be like, okay, we done pumped her head up enough with all these views, and she ain't paid for no promo, for no marketing. So, you know, we just going to, you know, roll it in a little bit so she could spend some coins to get it out there a little bit more. I think it'd be the algorithm sometimes. All right, so I want to give a reminder that being independent is not just about not being signed to a label. It's actually making money without being signed to a label, being able to have a sustainable career. And for those of y'all who actually want to be able to make money from your fan base, you're serious about figuring out how to monetize. I have a free video that you can check out. I don't need your email. I don't need your phone number. I don't need any information. All you have to do is go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. And I'm going to show you the lies that artists have been told that have been keeping them, probably you too, from monetizing your fan base and how shifting that perspective has allowed one artist we're working with to be on track to make over $500,000 this year. This is a different era. Don't fall for that trap saying artists can't make money. Artists do not have to be broke. So if you want to escape that trap, go to www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You do have to make sure you put the www in the beginning when you type it in your URL and watch this free video again. You're not going to be asked to put in your email. You're not going to be asked for your phone number, but it won't be up forever. Check it out. Well, yo, one of your highest viewed videos is straight up off the music on TikTok. Um, it's like 14 million views. I can't remember the song. Edison. Edison, uh -huh. right? Now, one, I didn't see you repeat that formula a whole lot no. of that content. Mm, I didn't. It, no, I didn't. Why not? Because, again, that was one of those, like, basic car videos, right? We're sitting in the car. I'm rapping. People connect with my bars. There wasn't a lot of, I don't want to say entertainment value, but it wasn't, like, a lot of extra shit and creativity added to right. it. But it blew, took off the 14 million views. So that does show that there's some love for a straight up, like, you're rapping, right? For sure. But, again, one, why didn't you repeat it? And then, two, why do you feel like that one took off the way it did? So, okay. Now, and that's the second one I did. I did, that's the second one I did, and it blew up in the car, you know, rapping with a friend. And I think at first, back then, when I had did it, it was kind of just like, I knew it was going to blow up just because it was an authentic vibe between, like, me and a homegirl. Like, when I smile at content I'm editing and watching back and I'm laughing while editing it, I'm like, oh yeah, this shit finna go up. Cause like, it's entertaining to me. So I know motherfuckers gonna, you know, fuck with it. So I knew it was gonna be lit, but I just, I also don't want, I guess I didn't repeat it cause I didn't want to get, like a lot of times when I'm creative, I don't create for virality. Like I create for what I want to create. So for that moment, I wanted to do a car video, but I didn't want to, like my biggest fear, you know, I'm Miller all in. So I don't really want to be like niched in one specific form of content or, and I know the, you know, they say you got to niche down and stuff like that, but I don't know. I just didn't want to, I feel, it feels so redundant to me, like doing the exact same thing. I know it's, it's what works. It's what works, but I don't know. I just feel like sometimes I want to do a car video. Sometimes I want to do a skit. Sometimes I want to do a performance video. But what if it's just for a period of time, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's like true. I'm gonna just run this play run for, however, for about yeah. three weeks hard on them, and then it's gonna feel redundant for the period, of, which is something that we all have to work through, right? Because it does, it's working, and it does suck. You feel like, dang, do they really want to see this again? Oh man, this this shit about to fail, and then it gets the views. And then, of course, you move on, and then once you, you do that period, right. it's going to feel like forever ago. Right. And even now, like, and again, like, my mentality has changed so much with leaving, like, just from leaving my job now, too, and just taking this serious and being all in it. It's like, now it's like, okay, no, you need strategy. You need, you know what I'm saying? You need to know what you're doing. But back then, it was kind of just like, oh, this will be dope. This will be lit. Let's just fuck around and throw it up. You know? Like, back then when I was at my job, I was like, I was kind of just chilling. Like, oh, let's just. And that's another thing, too, why my head had, like, gotten, gotten big because I was like, I mean, this is no effort. Like, really, this is just me taking out a camera, recording, and posting it, and this shit would go up. 
So I kind of just, yeah, I didn't, I don't know. Back then I was just like, mm, whatever, you know, I'm just creating what I want to create. But now looking back, I would have done, I would have done a lot of, a lot of things differently. Well, cause now, like you said, being full in. Yeah. You need a system. Yeah. You need a system. Cause that, especially now it's like, I'm putting out a lot more music. I'm recording a lot more music. And it's just like, when it comes to ideas, like you said, like there's, there's content ideas I can use, do the same thing just with different songs, you know, but but you know, again, back then I wasn't thinking like that. I was just like, well, let's just get this, you know, get it out there. Yeah, it was still this the creative outlet. The creative outlet, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Now you mentioned before we, uh, you know, sat down, started recording. <laughs> uh -huh. One of the things you started to talk about were the difference between LA and Atlanta, and you feel like you might have to, you know, take a little pilgrimage to Atlanta for a period yeah. for the music aspect of things. Can you break down? how you see LA versus Atlanta as somebody who's coming from LA. Yes, so it's crazy because like, so I've been to Atlanta a few times. Oh, we finna get into it, okay. So, <laughs> so I went to Atlanta a few times, literally right, right out the gate, right out the door. I go to, what club did I go to? I went to a couple clubs out there, but I went to Finn and Feathers too. I remember Finn and Feathers, there was this DJ and just the vibes was just immaculate. I was like, you know, I got a new song, da da da. No issues. She played my song at Finn and Feathers, everybody going up, you know, people smoking a hookah. It's a vibe. Went to another club asking the DJ to play my music. It's no issues. It's a vibe. LA, DJs are not playing your stuff. Like, if it's not on TikTok or if it's not a hit, if it's not on Billboard, they're not playing you in the clubs. Like, I go up to talk to DJs that, no, that, oh, yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, you'll be waiting there until 2 a.m. to hear your song. Nothing. To closing, nothing. I said, okay. And there's literally, like, I feel like in Atlanta, there's more community. I feel like in L.A., it's so individualistic every every up-and-coming artist is on their own grind you know and I feel like in Atlanta they reach down they bring you up you know everybody record like nine times out of ten you people record in the same studios you know people know the same people people are giving you a platform you know what I'm saying so I feel like in LA we don't really there's not a big community when it comes to the music it's not a big um it's, it's not a big network, I feel like, especially when it comes to other creatives in my space. Like, most of the creatives that, that I've collabed with have been influencers, you know? I've, I've, and I've, I've, re, I've, I mean, I've collabed with a couple artists on music, too. But when it comes to when I'm saying, like, the, the space and cultivating a safe environment, I don't get that when it comes to the music industry in L.A. And again, like I already have music. I'm not even from Atlanta. I've been there like a couple times. Even the trip that I took to Atlanta, I made hella music connects, like from DJs, producers, A and R's. It's just like I don't know. I just feel like because it's like also too everywhere you go, somebody knows somebody, and somebody's in the industry. Somebody, every everybody is somebody in Atlanta. Well, that's the Atlanta way. You know, somebody is somebody, and networking is everything. So it's like you meet one person, they like, oh, come pull up to the studio tonight. Oh shit, okay. <laughs> like, it seems like it's different in different pockets, which is interesting because it's like, yeah, LA with the music, for the artist side, it's less collaborative. From the producer side, it's more collaborative from yeah. what I hear. And then the influencer side is more collaborative, partially because we know this all just helps everybody and I gotta create videos anyway, I'm looking right. for talent, right? right. So I, that, that's interesting to hear. I haven't really heard many people address the artist specific um, pocket, but I, it does remind me of somebody I know who was like, "Yeah, man, like I get in a lot of rooms because people say I'm a, uh, I mean, because I'm a songwriter." But it's like if people knew I was an artist, they'll just be like, "Nah, bro." Like, I'm telling you, know, you. Yeah, they don't share the same. It, it's not, man. It's not the same, and I feel like too, LA, like it. I mean, and of course, I mean it's everywhere, but LA specifically, it's a lot of politics too. So, and and you gotta. Like when it comes to the music industry, the music business, it's like nine times out of ten, if you are like collaborating with certain artists or artists who have already built their own, you know, their own um, stability or their own team or whatever, it's like they don't always work with everybody. At, you know, they don't they don't work with everybody either because they have their own team, you know. And like I said, it'd be some sometimes you got a lot of hood politics. 
And it's just like, if that doesn't fit your brand, it doesn't fit your image, then it's kind of like you don't really see, you know, it's like there's no way we can really work together because it just doesn't fit the brand. So that's another side of things. Okay, so with that being said, there was a, <laughs> a post I saw. Let me see if I can find what that screenshot was. Give me one second. It was a post where they talked about you were you responded to it, you replied to it. I'll just say the gist of it. Basically, it said you were more famous in South Africa than your own country, right? <laughs> yes. Uh huh. What are your your thoughts there, and what does that feel like? Honestly, oh now nah, okay. So and it's crazy because it's like they get down so differently outside the country, like outside of the U.S. Man, it's like it's support, like the support. The engagement is crazy. So I went to um, I went to South Africa, you know, like I said, with me just pushing my music on TikTok, my streams did did really well in South Africa. And so I'm looking at my analytics and I'm like, what the heck is South Africa? Like it just popped up out of nowhere and they had like a really rapid growth. So we um, we booked a trip to South Africa no, th for leisure, you know. But I've I've had I've always had Africa on my bucket list. But I was like, I might as well go to South Africa. That's where I'm, a, you know, I'm getting a lot of streams. So let's see what what is going on over there. So I tell my fans that I'm there. I'm posting my experience, and everything is just viral. Like while I was in South Africa, everything's viral. Um, they're teaching me the language. They're teaching me new words. Um, they taught me a word called futsek, which means fuck off. <laughs> in Afrikaans. <laughs> and so one of my fans was like, put it in the song. So I was like, all right, shit. So I put Food Tech in the song. They went crazy, you know, number one trending on South African Spotify. It was just, you know, just listening to the, you know, just, just engaging with the fans. And so then, you know, from that, they're like, put Youngster CBT. Youngster, um, he's like a big South African rapper. Reached out to him, he hopped on it. So, you know, I got a song with, you know, very well-known South African rapper. And so, honestly, in South Africa, that was the first time that I experienced, like, it's, it's crazy, because one of my fans was like, well, what do you mean? You are, you did blow up. Like, you, you blew up in South Africa. Like, what do you mean you haven't blown up yet? You have blown up in South Africa. And so, when I think of it from that point of view, like, that's just crazy, because you think, I mean, this is all, you know, I mean, U.S. popping in my, in L.A., my country. I'm trying to hit Billboard. You know, you want to get the recognition. But at the same time, too, you got to go where you're appreciated and where you're loved. And, and there's freaking, you know, there's ways to monetize that, too. So for me, it was kind of just like a changing point in my mind where it's like, OK, my focus has been, you know, U.S. It's been the club. It's been this. It's been that. But you know what? There's a whole nother audience over here that, you know, a relationship that I could foster and you know what I'm saying? And they look at me like I'm their Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, it's crazy because what I, what I wanted uh, or what happened over there is what, of course, I wanted in the States. But sometimes, you know, God, I think that was God giving me a little taste. I was God giving me give me a little taste because I think I'm having like a real steady incline on my on my journey, and I don't think honestly if I'm being real I could say that I wanted I want I wanted but there's still some things that I need to learn some things that I need to prepare for something you know what I'm saying because if it just comes and I don't know how to handle it because there's been that time that viral you know the viral moment comes and and it comes and so I feel like that was the taste that I needed to like really prepare for um you know just to just to be serious take it seriously and and provide the fans with with what they want um also too because i feel like with the music thing in the past you know i'd drop a song and then i'd kind of get moving i'd go to influencing i do this you know i do acting i do all these other things but with my when when i had the blow up in south africa and they're kind of like telling me okay like you know we want this, we want this, we want merch, we want this. It's kind of like the fans aren't telling me what to do. So I kind of just got to, you know, listen and just let, let it work. But um, I think everything happens for a reason. So honestly, it was just, it was the moment that I needed to, to motivate me to keep going and to just push, keep putting out music, keep putting out music because 
the music isn't, you know, a lot, I feel like a lot of people, when they don't see the success they want, they're like, okay, maybe the music isn't good. Maybe the content isn't good. Maybe this, but I feel like literally everybody has been telling me like, no, you're lit. The content is lit. The music is lit. The personality is lit. Everything is lit. You just got to be patient. And I feel like I was getting, especially before that South Africa trip, I was getting very, very, very down in the dumps, very just discouraged. So I think that's what I needed to like, you know, put that, put that fire, give me that motivation. Like, no, you got this. You know, if they, they fuck with you over here, they don't, you know, everybody else will catch on. You just got to keep putting in that work. Yeah. So, so how has that moment changed the way that you're pushing your music now? Like, what are you doing differently since you experienced that? Engaging with the fans way more, like even with my fan base here um, at home, because even like in South Africa, I did a meet and greet. And uh, mind you, and the reason, like I said, like I'm in South, at home, you know, I kind of just, I do my own thing, da da da. In South Africa, I was with the family, so I didn't have, you know, like, and I didn't go with any friends or nothing like that. So nine times out of ten, like, when we wasn't on go, I'm bored in the hotel room. So I'm getting on live, you know, I'm talking to people or I'm reading comments. I'm just seeing, seeing what they, you know, what's up in South Africa. And um, I, I, I realized, too, it's the, it's the fan engagement, talking directly to them, responding to the comments, you know, going live. It's, that's what, what really builds the, the support and the fan base, the loyal fan base. Um, and so now, even, even at home, like I'm trying to, you know, I just, just talk when it comes to my content, being more transparent in my content, talking to my fans, um, hosting more, you know, events, fan, you know, for the, for the fans and for the community so they can get out. What because, does that look like? So for instance, like, again, when I was in South Africa, I had my meet and greet, right? And then I had a few of them fans come. Um, one of the fans who had came, he was a photographer, so he came, you know, took pictures for us and da da da. But even sharing that on social media, it's like everybody else felt like they missed out on it. So even though they didn't go, they're like, oh, I need to be at the next, you know, da 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 da. So when I get back home, you know, uh, and something like as far as when it comes to the community that I want to do more, like even more listening parties, more events, or more, um, more pop up events where it's like, I'm a creator too and I'm a brand. I also like, you know, putting on different different types of events. I have some ideas um, that I want to start doing just to get people come out and involved in the community, especially around LA. And I feel like that's, it's needed too. It's needed in the city. Just to be able to come out, have a good time, you know, pop up, listen to Nilla, meet, you know, I could perform, sell merch, just doing more things to get involved in the community so I can kind of just build more on that fan engagement. Cause I feel like I'm really lit on social media but it's like, I also want to make sure I'm doing my part in my city and, you know, having people come out physically and stuff like that. So, but that's what South Africa taught me. Cause before, like I said, I was kind of just, just doing the social media thing. Like really the only time you would see me is online. And that's for some other reasons, you know, just, like I said, just being in LA, going back real quick. Cause another quick difference when it comes to Atlanta, like I feel like in Atlanta, when it comes to performances and everything like that, um, Cause even when I was out there, I did a quick little performance when they played my song in the club and everything. But out at here, feathers? huh? At Fan and Feathers? No, it was at the other club. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at Fan and Feathers. It was at the other club when they played my track. <laughs> I did think that though. I no, did think that. No, 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 not at Fan and Feathers. <laughs> I was like, I was just gonna ask after. <laughs> no, it was at the second club. No, at the second club. Um, yeah, no, they passed me the mic. I did a quick little one too. Um, but like even like it's and it's just fun, just genuine, just fun, you know. But in LA, like they want be people be wanting you to pay to perform and you know, just I my thing is look, I ain't paying for no exposure. Okay. I'm not paying to for I could make a TikTok in my living room for free and get the exposure. Or if I want to perform, like I feel like I can host my own thing and I can have my own performances. But it's like to pay somebody else. To get up on their stage, I, you know, I, I'm, that's just not where I want. I just don't feel like that's necessary. So now I'm at the point where it's like, okay, well, if you're not going to give me a seat at the table, I'm going to have to bring my own, you know, I'm going to have to bring the table, the chair, and, and it all. So definitely I'm trying to get into more, you know, more shows, but having my own, having my own shows, my own performances, my own, you know, things like that to really get into the music space um and that side of things because like i said i feel like music was something like the music was so good that people would just stream it but 
I think people were kind of still confused, like, okay, well, is she a creator? Is she an influencer? Or does she do, you know? So now it's more so putting the brand in more so like, okay, no, I rap for real. You know, this is the music. Yes, I'm also funny and da da da. But more so leading with the with the music. And that's gonna have to take, you know, more performances, more shows, getting people out there, getting the fans out there. So yeah, I wanna do, yeah, definitely more just community, community stuff. That's what that's what South Africa taught me. Just focus on community. And then I think everything else kind of just comes together. Yeah, but but can you talk more about about um, I guess the transition into the music space from being an influencer because we've talked about that before, right? Like there's a guy that we're really cool with named Iso Kenny, and like he was like a big skit creator. Mm -hmm. Now moved over to music. Um, we've seen people like DDG and even like Kai Sinat, right? Like it's starting to be this wave of of influencers who are almost using what they've learned in the content space to move over into music, but then from the fan side, or, well, yeah, I guess the fan side, you can actively see almost sometimes the people on the music side like pushing back against that and, and kind of giving them a hard time. So like, do, do you ever feel like there are certain music moves you haven't been able to make or maybe have been held back from because you, you are presented as like an influencer first? Absolutely, absolutely. Because um, I feel like, especially in the music world, like everything is about image, and I feel like also too, the transition was kind of interesting for me because the influencer space is like structured. And um, <laughs> there's structure, there's, you know, terms and conditions and- Contracts. Contracts and yeah, you know, and it's just representation and, it's just, it's, it's different. So it's like, I'm signed to an agency on the TikTok side of things, but they don't handle none of the music stuff. So it's kind of like, I have a separate team for that, but it's kind of just, it, it was hard kind of for me to transition because it's like, this doesn't make sense. But like, I feel like there's a lot of thing in the music industry that just doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And so that's when I'm just like, Okay, so I'm meeting with this person. I'm meeting with I'm meeting with these. I'm meeting with label exec because even it got to the point where you know, like you know, the, they would see the TikToks and stuff, and they would want to sign me for that single. But again, I'm talking to these labels, and just it's not making sense. And um, yeah, they definitely. I mean, everything is on image. They want they want to kind of you know they want to they want to change the image. They want you to be sellable. You know, they want you to be sellable. And granted. I feel like the influencer, yes, in that sense, it's kind of like you're salesy too, but in a different way because it's your lifestyle. It's your real lifestyle. Selling something else. You're, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, it, it's like I can, I can put these shoes on as an influencer, but I actually wear these. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm selling them, but I actually wear these shoes. As opposed to the music industry, you want me to sell something that's not me, but I have to pretend like it's me you know, for it to be sold. And it was just a lot, it's, it's just a lot of that, you know? So, I want to go deeper into that because I want, listening to your music, subject matter wise, it's not the same content that a lot of women rappers are popular for right, for right now. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're aware of? Versus oh, Vermont? absolutely. All right, so can you speak on how you see what women are paparazzi we're talking about at the moment and how you see creating your con your content your music and how you feel like you fit in yes so um i started you know when i was first making music i did like the bops i did you know i did the rap rap i wasn't too vulgar in the lyrics um but i was still talking my shit you know every now and, then. and you know it was cool but I feel like as I've grown in my artistry and as I talk to people too, it's kind of just like, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing. And I think that's what the music industry is. I feel like, I feel like the music, <laughs> I feel like there's characters. I feel like as an artist, like there's different characters. And especially like when we talk about hip hop, it's like, okay, the male is the gangster, the thug, and then the female rapper, whatever, you know, that character is like, you know, the... I don't want to say the stripper, but <laughs> the, you know, you know what I mean. It's kind of just like, it's two, it's two different characters. You're either a thug 
or you, you, you know, popping it open. And <laughs> either you busting it down or, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, what I don't want to do is do what everybody else is doing because I also see myself as an entrepreneur, like beyond being an artist, I see myself as an entrepreneur and I feel like if I, if the market is oversaturated with something and also too, it's not authentic to who I am really. So I really, I mean, I do what's authentic to me. So I, it's never been a thought in my head to even go that direction because that's not me. But again, just being myself and one of the reasons why I, I'm so, I'm, um, writing and putting out the music that I make is because I feel like in the future when you pull out the history book of female rap and you only see one thing you know like I, I think Anila All In needs to be you know needs to be there the, that content needs to exist the music needs to exist because especially as women we go through so much and there's so much we can talk about and we're only talking about one thing like you know I just feel like it's it's so much more to woman empowerment. And that's another thing, because I watch these interviews, I watch the female rappers talk about it, and it's always woman empowerment. And, you know, but it's like, woman empowerment looks like so many other things, and we're focusing on this, oh, you yeah. know? You know what we focusing on. <laughs> and we focusing on busting it open. <laughs> But it's like, you know, again, I think there's a lane that hasn't been filled. So it's like when I when I write that music and you hear me talking about, you know, the toxic relationships and the toxic this, that's another thing because a lot of these women going out sad because, you know, and, and it's like we're at the point where toxicity is being glorified and, you know, just dealing with dealing with rich men, you know, who who cheat just because they're rich and it's okay because they're going to pay our bill. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just so much superficial stuff and it's just, I'm over it. So if I'm over it, I know somebody else is over it. So here you go, home girl. Stream one wish, Manila all in. Cause I know, you know, <laughs> brilliant plug <laughs> slid that shit on in there. <laughs> Cause I know you need this right now. You going through a breakup. You probably don't want to pop that pussy right now. So here, listen to this. <laughs> they make it seem like they popping it with tears in their eyes. Man, 24 7. It's like, okay, I don't want to bust it open every single second of the day. Like, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. I need something new. I got you. I got you. I mean, like you said, you feel that way. I'm sure there's many others who feel that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? On that side of the market. <laughs> and that can be appreciated just to even hear even someone vocalize that now. With all that being said, what does Nilla all in mean? Oh, I love that question. Um, okay, wait, you want the short version? Give me the short, then all of it. You know, we got a little time. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so Nilla all in. To be, to really be all in, it's like you got to put your all in what you do. But not only that, we're very, we're multifaceted. So, you know, it's like, I feel like it's more of a realistic version of, and relatable version um, of really, you know, just who we are. Cause it's like, like I said, we don't always experience the same emotion 24 seven. I might be, you know, popping my pussy on Monday, but maybe on, you know, on Tuesday, I'm going through heartbreak. On Wednesday, I'm trying to, you know, I want to get some to the club. So also too, in my music, I feel like it's very, it's very multifaceted, very like where I got the all type of vibes where you can listen to an Edison and have a little club banger like, OK, she talking her shit. But then you can also listen to a gotta run and be like, oh, OK, damn, like this is some real shit like she real spitting. This is, you know, I'm in, inspired to be better, do better and choose better, you know, uh, choose a better partner. Um, so I feel like also, too, it just describes kind of being versatile, being dynamic and yeah, just, just going all in, putting y'all all in. And that's really, that's who Nilla All In is. She's relatable, authentic, um, driven, ambitious. But, you know, if, if she gonna do it, she gonna do it to the neck. So we got to. Do it to the what? Do it to the neck. It's like jumping in the pool. And if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it to the neck. No, it's like, I'm... <laughs> Put me on. It's, it's a song, but, but I, well, no, we, cause but I ain't gonna be on this podcast plugging no other 
<laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> no, it just means you gotta, you know, you gotta do it. You got, you can't be, you can't be scared. Gotcha. You can't be scared. You gotta go all in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what do it to the uh, neck means. I thought it was like Kelly slang or something. It is. I was rock. Okay. Yeah. It is. Okay. <laughs> hey man, do it you to already the know. <laughs> Every, everyone knows I'm not afraid to look stupid on asking a, a question of a, a, a term or a verse or whatever. <laughs> you you know, shouldn't be. Put me on. But you said all in. Where does Nilla come from? Oh, okay. So Nilla, my name is actually Brene. Um, my line sisters, yeah, I'm a Delta. Um, my line, uh, you see it? So my line sisters, um, they used to call me Brunilla. And so, yeah, so Brunilla came from Brene. Now Brene was the very, like, cause I, you know, I graduated um, college with provost honors, you know, like I'm Delta woman, very scholastic, very studious, like, you know what I'm saying? Very professional oriented. Um, so when I started doing a rap, Thing, you know, we would, we would be in the crib, like we would put on the beat, we, you know, it'd be, it'd be a little vibe, and I'd start rapping or whatever, and I'd be like, ah, oh, shit, that's Nilla, that, you know, they're like, that's not Brene, that's Nilla. So Nilla became like the alter ego, because, again, that kind of like double life, that, you know, that Hannah Montana lifestyle from the college student, engineer, Delta, and then, you know, the entertainer, Nilla, the rap girl, the, you know what I'm saying, the big personality, and I felt like they were always kind of clashing, so, um, so yeah, Nilla, Nilla came from, from Brunilla, but that just became my alter ego. But, but now one last question, mm -hmm. and this is without necessarily the music industry in mind, but you can always integrate music into this. What do you hear when you hear no labels necessary? Mm. Ownership. <laughs> I hear ownership. And I also hear like, um, Independence, um, just like random things like that come off the top of the independence and also just options. I feel like everybody thinks you need a label. Um, and yeah, there's, there's other options. There's, there's other ways to put that thing down, flip it and reverse it. All right, I, I know that one. <laughs> you know that one? I know that one. Okay, okay, I was going to get on you if you did it. <laughs> I was going to get on you. <laughs> I love that because you actually, you're one of the few people who catch that necessary, right? Mm. It's like, it's not necessarily not, a, not you don't have to, never. Yeah. It's just not necessary. It's an option. It's an option, yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like there's power in that option versus just saying no or yes automatically. Right. So I'm glad you caught that. Everybody, I hope y'all enjoyed this talk with Nilla All In. I certainly have. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And I'm Nilla All In. And we out. Peace. Appreciate you for watching. If you like content like this, you'll love seeing our music marketing strategies that we use as an agency to actually blow up artists to millions and even billions of streams that are available for free at nolabelsnecessary.com. And the cool part about it that's going to really make you love it is we don't have to be all entertaining and add all this fluff just to get some views that we do on YouTube. We get straight to the information. There's play by play in courses that give you a breakdown of every step that you should do to get success. And you have the ability to have communication with us. We get on live talks, a lot of cool things for members, and it's free just to hop in. So check it out right now at nolabelsnecessary.com.